brothers and sisters in Christ. I begin my homily by wishing you all a very blessed, holy, and joyful Christmas. Have you heard about an ancient Greek philosopher called Diogenes? He was a contemporary of Alexander the Great, Aristotle and Plato. There is a famous story of Diogenes that he went around the sunlight streets of Athens, a lantern in hand, looking for true and honest man. Diogenes lit a lantern in broad daylight. What he really said was, I am looking for or seeking human being. In Greek it is called anthropon seto. Either a human being or the human being. Either an exemplar of humanity or the idea of humanity or both. The lantern in the hands of Diogenes symbolizes a lot. The lantern shines and produces light. And his search for true man gave elegantly simple expression to be human quest for self-knowledge. Search for the real human being. The two themes from this story of Diogenes, shining light in daylight and searching true man, resound good with the readings of this great feast of today, Christmas. In the gospel we heard, and the word became flesh and lived among us. Sure enough, we are meant to hear in John's famous words a reworking of the very beginning of the Bible in Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was a formless void. There was darkness over the deep and God's spirit Howard over the water. God said, Let there be light. And there was light. So John writes, In the beginning was the word. And later we heard, The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not overcome it. Brothers and sisters, last evening at the eve of Christmas, we rejoiced because the darkness of the world has been shattered and lit light in, is shining on the world in Jesus Christ. Today, in the full light of the day, we give thanks to the Father for sending his Son to us the true light who gives light to all who seek light. It is a version of the timeless theme we return to this season. Year after year, cold and darkness give way to warmth and light. Anxiety and distress give way to contentment and peace. Brokenness to wholeness, loss to found, despair to hope, sorrow and suffering give way in the end to joy. The messenger of peace, hope and love isn't born on a sunny summer day. 
that bird speaks to us, inspires us, moves us because it takes place, at least in our imagination, in the bleak midwinter. On that day, holy night in Bethlehem, the prophecy of Isaiah was fulfilled. The people who walked in the darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dealt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. That light is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. When we contemplate the mystery of Christmas, that God so loved the world, that he sent his only son to redeem us, became flesh and dwelt among us, we cannot help but to fill with wonder and awe. We become like the shepherds and the magi. All we can do is approach the mystery of God in adoration. This even surpasses all human knowledge. St. Thomas Aquinas wrote, Of all the works of God, this surpasses reason more than any other, since our cannot, one cannot conceive of God doing anything more powerful than that true God, the Son of God, should be made true and the real man. Do we not express our relevance for this great mystery every time we recite the Nicene Creed? We may bow at the words, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. Friends, in Christmas we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Jesus takes on human flesh and he teaches us what it is to be a human being. St. Paul amplified and deepened the idea of Jesus as firstborn in the letters to the Colossians and to Ephesians. Jesus, we read in these letters, is the firstborn of all creation, the true prototype of man, according to which God formed the human creature. Man can be the image of God because Jesus is both God and man. The true image of God and of man. By becoming man, God has in a certain way united himself with every human person. He has revealed to us the truth about who he is. He is love. He is mercy, he is compassion. He has revealed to us also that very human being has dignity, including unborn child, the poor, the outcast, the suffering, and the dying. By becoming man, God came to earth to deliver us from sin and death. He came to make all things new to bring about the new creation. He took on our own nature so that we might become partakers of his divine nature. This theme already we heard beautifully in our reading today. The fathers and doctors of the church speak of the Christmas mystery as a wonderful exchange between God and man. He takes what is ours so that we may give us what is his. In sending his son, God has opened for us a share in divine life, the power, St. John says, to become children of God. Very famous Syriac author is called Ephraim the Syrian, about whom I wrote my doctor thesis. He writes, he gave us divinity, we gave him humanity. Of course, these lines resonate with what St. Athanasius from Alexandria 
said in his famous sentence in De Incarnazione, verse 54. God became man so that man may become God. For Saint Ephraim, Saint Athanasius, incarnation of God into human form is the wonderful act of God's love and mercy for humanity. And this love and mercy of God become flesh in Jesus Christ restored the dignity of man. In Jesus Heaven and earth are united, and the divine horizon is open, and man can grasp God in the very act of humility of God. St. Ephraim writes beautifully in his hymns on church, Heaven exulted, earth rejoiced, creatures leapt for joy. Because the good one came down and remained among the wicked. Sion was jealous because her king came. She was sad because she saw the good things that surround him. St. Francis of Assisi is called as the second Christ. Was so moved by the mystery of Christmas that he began to custom of the Christmas crib with live figures. His love for poverty led him to this special appreciation for the wonder of that first Christmas. One of his great followers, Saint Benaventure, wrote the following, The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, has become the slave and humble servant of men. God, supremely glorious, dwelling in the heights of majesty, has dwelt in a lonely manger. Here at the manger, you and I discover our true identity. Here we gaze at this child, this wonderful child, the one who has changed our destiny by joining us in our human life in this world so that we could share in his divine life because he, the only son of God, became flesh and dwelt among us. Friends, what God so stunningly reveals at that first Christmas is that when he himself finally does come, it is not in cloud or in wind or fire or earthquake or even simply in a still small voice. But he comes in the fullness of his creation as human. He comes as one of us and dignifies our own species in doing so. He comes not as a bird of the air, beast of the field, a great sea creature. Even more impressive than a talking lion is God himself as fully human. Christmas marks his being born in the likeness of men. The very God who made man and has long endured our sin with great patience now scandalously found in human form, says Paul in his letter to Philippians. My dear brothers and sisters, we worship him who gives meaning to our life, who offers us eternal life and salvation. In becoming man, he has brought eternity to us, and so we live as people of hope. This virtue of hope is truly a virtue of Christmas. A virtue that should distinguish our lives as followers of Christ. As followers of Jesus Christ. In the midst of so much anxiety and despair in the world, may we be witnesses of Christian hope. We are all discouraged by the constant onslaught of bad news. And we dream dream of places where hope is high, life is worth living, and God is merciful. There is a grace 
that surpasses, that sets us free from the burdens of our past. And that leads us home to God. I conclude this homily with a beautiful quote from Dietrich Bonhoeffer, about whom already I've quoted many times. It's from his, one of his famous Christmas sermon. He says, Jesus Christ, God himself, he speaks to us from every human being. The other person, this enigmatic, impenetrable you, is God's claim on us. Indeed, it is the holy God in person whom we encounter. God's claim is made on us in a wanderer on the street, the beggar at the door, the sick person at the door of your church, though certainly no less in every person near to us, in every person with whom we are together daily. My dear friends, may Jesus, born in the silence of night at Bethlehem, bless you and your loved ones with his love and peace. Bon Natale, Feliz Navidad, Joye Noel, Schöne Weihnachten, and a Merry Christmas. <laughs>